All right, all right. You are once again here on Aesop's Tables. This is my show where I cook, I talk to friends that I like, and we talk to MCs and people that we think are awesome. On the show today, we've got my man, Slug from Atmosphere. All right, all right. Good dude. He's in town tonight playing at Tiger Sequoia, which is uh, down the street from here, and it's going to be a good show. Who are you playing with? We're playing with Dem Atlas, the Lioness, and my, my little sister, DJ Keezy. Nice, nice. I like Dem Atlas, and I actually just started listening to the Lioness, and I'm into that. But now, you're talking about your little sister. Is that actually family or just the homegirl? I mean, she's the homie, uh-huh. you know, but she's the little sister. Word, word. That's what's up. Of course, the show is sponsored by... Organic Alternatives, my boys at Fresh Shard, Tayo Sequoia, who, who always gives me great beer, and whoever else that wants to hook up and sponsor us, you know how to contact us. Today, we're going to ask Slug some questions about some of the things that I've seen him do in the past. And one of the first things I want to ask is, what was it like when you first started making music, as far as like when you first came up? I mean, when I was, uh, I started making music in high school, and it was just... It was just a, a way to to, a, to appease the gods of hip hop. Like I didn't really think there was anything there. You know what I'm saying? Like I was doing it because, as a kid, you felt like you were supposed to make that step to be more than just a listener, but to, and more than just an advocate. But but you had to be a participant. So I, I was a you know I, I wrote graffiti. I, I was on the cardboard spinning around on my face. I was trying to DJ. I was trying to rap. I tried to be a, you know a part of of the whole. The whole movement when it hit my city. Right, right. You know, and I think a lot of the stuff, too, that I always thought about, especially when you guys first started coming out, is that when we started, we didn't really think about, I mean, it was the industry that was happening, but there was no chance we was going to get signed. Exactly. The, you know, the signing process was uh, very Hollywood-based, and uh, you had to know somebody. And even if you knew somebody, cats weren't really putting each other on. As, as I don't know if they do that now. But it definitely didn't feel like we was going to go anywhere besides what we were doing. I mean, you can imagine living in Minneapolis where there was no industry for hip hop. Uh, the idea of making a demo tape and mailing it randomly to record labels, that was, I was not going to do that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I, I, cause it just seemed fruitless. And so yeah. I never had, I never had aspirations of making a career out of this. Right. Like, I, I had aspirations to drive a truck. Right, right. And I was going to rap on the side because I like to battle. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and as a younger kid, I just liked being a part of all of it. But as I got older, I liked to battle because I liked the competitiveness. I liked the attention that I got from it. I liked making people laugh. Right, right. Yeah, because, you know, um, you know, and I, I, I feel like as we're getting older, you know, you've, you've been coining the idea of uh, dad rap. You know, we come from an era of, uh, you know, the people that were in our age group are now in their 40s and stuff now. And um I don't know. I don't want to say that kids aren't doing what we were doing back then, but battle rapping used to be so important to me back then. And when I first met you, uh, there was a big thing about freestyling together, and a lot of the shows that were going on there was a lot of beatboxing. And of course, uh, Mikey, God rest his soul, idea, um, one of the best battles in the world. That part of it for us being from Cali is what we were attracted to with y'all because you know we were all coming around coming together at the same time. Sure. And um, your ferocity on the mic was crazy, man, because you were kind of you were a funny guy, but you were like a mean asshole kind of funny guy. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you had really good one liners that were like, you know, you could never tell if it was written or if you would come off the head. Or... I was always just trying to think of what to say to make people laugh. And uh-huh. even even the mean asshole part of it, uh-huh. you know, I own it. I was that. Yeah. But it was. It was it was uh, identity. It was an act, right? Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and I'm, I'm I can admit that I, I have that humility. Like, it was an act. I was just I, I wanted that persona to be what people remembered. I mean, know? nothing wrong with that because I, mean, I think that was I think that's what was dope about it because you had Moxie. You know what I mean? I mean, deep down, I was insecure as hell. Oh no shit! You know okay. what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, because uh-huh. I'm you know I'm from Minneapolis. I'm like, well, these people aren't gonna care about me. They're not gonna remember me. They don't want to hear right. a rapper from the from Minnesota. Right, right. You know what I'm right. saying? And so so I feel like that insecurity actually sparked me to go even harder and meaner and try to be funnier. Right, right, right. right. Like, I I feel like, and so when I say insecure, I just mean it was an insecurity of like, uh, are these people going to care? Right, right. You know? And I think they did, man. I mean, obviously, you know, you have your career now, and um, I think there's a lot of... uh, old school cats that followed your, your career from the get-go that are still there that, you know, I've been to some of your shows and there's somebody there with their kid, it's kid. And, you know, the, you know, there's dad with his son and his son brought his small uh, toddler and they bring him to the shows because they want them to keep on picking up this energy that you brought into, which started with your first album, Overcast. Now, I remember when that album came out. Was that the album that you think that made your mark on the scene or was it God Loves Ugly? I would say Overcast is what got us in the door, like uh, college radio, festivals uh the underground circuit 
when God loves ugly happened, that's what brought us into the light and, and, and put us under the microscope of people who were not rappers. Right. Like right. Overcast got us t- to be heard by other rappers. Right. right yeah. You know that's why we dug that. Yeah. And, and then, uh, and then I grinded it out, started touring during the Lucy Ford era, me and idea got in the van and started just driving around and, and, and battling and, and freestyling and just doing anything anywhere that we could. And, and that continued to just kind of solidify us with other artists, whether they liked us or hated us, they, they knew who we were. Right. Right. When we dropped God Loves Ugly, uh, it went through Fat Beats, which they had at the time. One well, love the Fat Beats. They had distro yeah. through through BMG. Yeah, I love those dudes back then. And that's what got us on the shelves of Best Buy, Target. Right. Because Fat Beats was going through BMG with the CDs. So suddenly that face on the cover of God Loves Ugly was inside of Target's. Yeah, man. And it was like out of nowhere because yeah. underground rap hadn't done that. Yeah, man. y'all were the first that really where it was like you would see that in a store and be like, holy shit, yeah. this is at an actual market. So yeah. then what we did is we just booked shows in any city with a Target. <laughs> you know, prior to that, MCs was going to the places well. where, where hip hop lived. Yeah, yeah. We started going places where Target lived. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it was like, yo, if we can get a show there, even if it's in front of 20 people, the record's available. They yeah, can yeah. they can go get it right. or they can tell people about it whatever so we started playing biz. small small cities any right. city big city then we'd be in New York one day and then the next day would be in bull pussy <laughs> for real you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah 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 and that was what made it happen for us man that's you know that's a great uh, concept too is that uh, that you guys played where you could buy the records at. Because back then, in stores were, you know, mom and pops, you know, yep. you couldn't do, you know, Amoeba does it now, you know, Fat Beats, of course, they start doing it bigger where, you know, where they have Fat Beats everywhere. But back then, you couldn't even, I remember me and Merce, we would go in front of a record store, you know what I'm saying? Just hang out, yeah, talk yeah. to people. Like, we were like, literally, we were notorious for like having a box of CD or back then tapes and then sit in front and be like, yo, I know you probably have never known who we are, but you should buy this before you go into the store. And, um. You know, now with the internet and everything, things are different, you know, things spread faster and kids, uh, sure. word of mouth is more strong. And uh, getting into that question, the next question I have for you is, uh, I follow you on, on Instagram, and um, a lot of people might not know this, and I know what the media, the way things is, some people assume that most people's uh, um, Instagrams or their media accounts are controlled by some regular dude, but a lot of times you're on your your media account. Oh, I, I run my own Twitter. I run my own Instagram. In yeah. fact, I don't even think the label has my passwords. No, right. <laughs> they they get the Facebook because yeah. I I can't I can't mess with Facebook. It's yeah. just too much. Too many old angry people. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I mess with the yeah. Instagram because it's fun. It was it was actually evidence that got me to start. I I, I wasn't gonna do Instagram. I was right. like, oh, I was like, if I do, I was on Twitter and I'm like, man, if I do Instagram, I gotta start doing every single social media that yeah. that, that is born. And I'm like, nah. And then I remember I was uh, I was with Ev. We were we were we were on tour together, and he was like, "Look at what I'm doing, though. I'm taking these photos and I'm playing with them and editing yeah, it. Yeah. And it just looked like such a great way to kill time on the tour bus. Yeah, yeah. So I started doing it, and then one thing led to another, and now I'm like putting my kids on blast, you know? Yeah, man. For likes, what's what is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> for likes, yeah, man. <laughs> for followers, it's fun though, man. I think you know, for me. Uh, I watch, you know, every once I'll catch when you'll say something. And uh, while I was bringing it up is you get a few assholes, man, that like to, you know, they know it's you or they assume it's you, you know, and they, they come and talk. And uh, there was this one thing. I forget what it was, man. I wish I had it pulled up right now. But a dude said something really rude or something. I think it was like a political thing. You had said you had made your opinion about something about the world or something. Sure. And this dude had his opinion right back. But then he just blah, 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 blah. And then but you just kept on murdering him with like kindness and like honesty and like you were like and the dude was just like kind of melting as it kept on going down and i thought that was what was dope what i love about the new media now because a lot of uh mcs and uh you know uh, people that are figures in the world you can reach out to somebody immediately if they speak back to you sure you know that i think the problem is though we only respond to the assholes <laughs> Well, somebody would be like, up. <laughs> somebody be like, you saved my life, and your music did this for me, and this oh, and that, yeah. and it's like, you don't know how to respond to that because you don't know how to take a compliment. And you're like, oh, okay. I mean, 
Yeah. Do I just say thanks? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Whereas if somebody comes out at you like, fuck you, I think you sucked it. It's a lot easier to look at them and be like, eat, eat my shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 fuck you. And then the other, the other people are like, why do you only respond to the trolls? And it's right. like, I don't know. I think that's why they exist. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So I try not to even respond to the trolls unless, right. unless I can make them part of the show. Like right. if I can take your trolling and right. turn it into and turn it into my yeah yeah whoa did I break something yeah that was a troll that was a troll that was on the roof he, I, he just jumped in real it, quick you know if I get if I get, it's the same as shows if somebody heckles my immediate reaction is how do I take this and turn it into the show you know what I mean right 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 it's it's the same you know it's it, 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 it's the same way of dealing with social media you know at the end of the day like truth be told man I wish I was a stand up comedian. I, I think you would be good at that. Right? I would, I, you know. I've thought I, about it. I love rapping, but I, I feel like something about stand-up comedy has this ability to really shine light on the the dark parts of humanity yes. as well as the beautiful parts of humanity in a way that even music doesn't necessarily get to. Music is expected to do this incredible work. Wow. Getting into something right here. Whereas with comedy people don't expect as much out of it right. so it gets to like it, it gets to subversively actually do the real work you yeah, know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. and so so part of me just really you know wishes i could be a stand up comedian i think you could know? do it man i've seen you you know cuz you know you're a, you know you of course your atmosphere is a group it's you and Ant and you know everybody else you bring with you on stage but a lot of times you have the mic by yourself i do and it's something that and it's funny cuz i'm in an eight man group and so um, each one of us always wants to have the mic and then we always have our moment to talk. And I'm a talkative motherfucker, so I always want to say something because I'm a funny motherfucker. And I think I want to say something funny to the crowd because I've always found that you open a crowd up yep. by expressing yourself to them. And it's like a barbecue. You know, you go, hey, everybody, enjoy some food and blah, 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 and drink up. And it goes, yeah. And then you own them. They, they, everybody's together, you know. And um, I've watched you on stage, and you have this, you have a commanding power where you do some funny shit on stage a lot, man. Well, you know, people, uh, people have always accused me of working through my – can I can I curse? Yes, okay. Of course. People always accuse curse. me of working Jesus through my shit Christ. on stage or or in my music. They're like, you know, you 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 write this as a like a cathartic way to deal with the stuff in your head and whatever, whatever. And I'm like, that's real, but I feel like in in comedy, that's that's where like I feel like most comedians are, are definitely suffering from depression. Oh no, they are. Or, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they're, yeah. de they're definitely dealing with a lot of darkness and, and yeah, manic depression is part of being a comedian. That's the real way to work. That's the real way to work through that is is to make light of it, is to provoke dialogue, is right. to offend people and or put your wing around people and let them know that they're not alone with how they feel. Yeah. You know, with music, it's different because we have to be cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we have to be cool. Right. We have to people look at us and they're like, oh, I want to be like him in right. comedy. Nobody has to be cool. Right. And comedy, you're always you know, of course, you can listen to a recording of, of a comedy set and you can watch a comedy set on TV. But a lot of time you go and watch him live and you heckle and laugh. And, you know, the guy feeds off all that energy. Music, we make it and then our ghost lays onto a song and then someone goes home and then be, makes us that person yeah. in their mind. Yeah. And we stay that person you know through the duration of their their entirety with us until they see us at a show and they're like hey why aren't you being like the guy i know on the song it's like motherfucker i just got done performing i'm an asshole right now or i'm tired right I, now i gotta man. take a shit yeah yeah like, or there's this girl over there that i'm trying to talk to sorry guy you know and um people don't get the difference in that but i've been around and someone i want to bring up is lucy k and i got to meet him once and it was because a, a friend of mine i don't want to name because he's an idiot for doing this to me but we're at this place called Max Fish's in New York. I know that bar. And it's a cool spot. You know, some famous people come in, normal people. It's a dive bar. You know, it's a really fun spot. I'm sitting at the I'm, uh, Louis C.K. sitting at the bar. I don't recognize him at first. And everybody goes, hey, man, you got to meet this guy, man. And we just had played SOBs. He's like, you got to meet him, man. You know, he's trying to do, be that guy. He introduced me to everybody. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Come up to him. He goes, hey, Louis, man, this is Aesop, man, from Living Legends. They just played uh, SOBs. And then, he, and he goes, hey. And then the guy walks away. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm like, and then he's like, hey. And he's like, Hey, and I'm like, you motherfucker in both of our heads. We're like, you know, he just did this to us and we have to stay and talk to us. And he literally was like, he's like, that guy's an asshole for that, huh? And I was like, yeah, he's a fucking dick for that. But Louis C.K., his energy at that time, you know, this is a, he was famous at that time. He was hunched over and he looked like he didn't want to be talked to. And he was probably just had just did some comedy and maybe bit bombed or whatever. And I could tell when I looked, I was like, damn, man, it's fucking crazy that this guy who I revere, I, you know, and I just got done performing. And I hold him up some more so high, but he was right where I was in my head as well. You know what sure, I mean? Sure, sure. He was in his own mind. He was all in his own world and shit. So I think you would be a great comedian, man. 
I appreciate that. I, you know, who knows? I, once once I get fired from this job, <laughs> got my foot in the door. Let's see what else. Can what you else? get fired from your own career? Oh hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah. yeah, yeah. Do do drugs. Um, uh, hey, kill any, somebody. Anything can be ruined. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing's forever. We were just talking about that earlier. Somebody asked me a while back. I was like, Hey man, you haven't put any music out in a while. So well, I cook now, and I just you know I'm, I have music I make. You know, but I like making food. And he's like, You know that's uh that's cool, man. I was like, Well look, motherfucker, I can open four restaurants, and that shit will be here when the I'm there or not you know music is not forever and not everything is forever you have to have a jack of all trades kind of attitude and just like you said when you started you know you want to be you want to drive a truck or do whatever you could to you know pay bills and pay rent and you know and do all that shit and here you are in this great career you have but you can't consider you know consider that to be forever because music could die uh, you know, the government could fucking change, man, and it could ban all s- s- form of sound, and we'd have to go back to some new shit, you know, and that's why I stay working. I work on a farm every once in a while, and, you know, I want you know, I want to learn how to fly a plane, you know what I mean? I want to learn how to, uh, I don't even know how to drive a stick shift. <laughs> I want to learn so, like, when the zombies come, I could go and get inside of a fucking car immediately and do shit because I didn't ever know how to do that before. I don't know if that's... Hey, when the zombies come, go to the zoo. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Where the animal? With the animals. With the animals. As long as it's not zombie animals. But if there's no zombie animals, do because the zombies would, would not want to fuck with the zoo? Or? No, just because there's a lot of food there. Oh, word, word. Nah. You know, there's a lot of resources. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You, you do have animals who technically will likely help you fight the zombies. Right, right, because they ain't going to fuck with zombies. Yeah, man. So. They're going to eat zombies, if anything. And because nobody else is thinking, go to the zoo. Right, yeah. Everybody's thinking about going to the liquor store. Yeah. Going to Walmart, they would go to Walmart, the liquor store, probably strip clubs, because all the strippers would probably stay inside the strip clubs. I'm assuming. You've really thought this out. Yeah, I've yeah. Thought about this. I, thought about this. <laughs> I thought about what would happen if the zombies came. What would I do? I know what people I wouldn't fuck with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know people would be like, "Where were you?" I was like, "Motherfucker, I was getting as far away from your ass." Finally, I was hoping you become a zombie. Uh, so, anyways, we're getting uh, deep into the conversation. I had another question I want to ask you now. You guys have a new album coming out. Uh, my Vita Local. Now, is My Vita Local? My Vita Local. Yeah, so being that, you know, Fresno is a very Americano town, um, I think that the term in that is so dope. What was the concept behind making that name for the album, and what, what's, what's, the, what's the concept behind the album? Uh, the, the, I, I made an album that was very contained to my immediate surroundings, but not very insular. Like, it, 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 I was dealing with things that were, I felt, I felt to be relatable to people outside of me, mm-hmm. but I did know that most of the inspiration was coming from things that were immediately in front of my face. You know, I'd spent some time at home. Uh, me and my wife had another kid. Uh, that's my fourth yeah, son. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I had uh, built a, a home recording studio finally for the first time in my whole career. I never had, had that. I was always recording in rent a studios, you know? Right, right, right. Um, and so I just was able to really have the freedom to, to not leave not right. leave my family not leave the house not leave my city oh, that sounds delightful you know and so i was and so i wrote an album about my city and the people around me um and so i needed a title that spoke to that and but when i realized how this could be relatable to people outside of my being that's when i was like well i want a title that's that's that that, that is about my surroundings but also is 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 open is right. open for interpretation nice you know? nice and I also like jokes. I like play on words. So me via the local, yeah, you know, uh, my local life. I, yeah, I no, I like was, that. I, I thought I thought worked well. I didn't realize when I named the album that somebody had like already made a line of makeup <laughs> with the real? same name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me via local. Me via the local is a, is a makeup company. Is a, or it's a line of makeup. Some uh, yeah, I didn't uh, know that. I can't remember who, but some famous. Some famous person, you know, one of these celebrity makeup. Oh, I never. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know nothing about makeup. I can't remember her name because I I don't pay enough attention. But did somebody bring that to your attention, or did her people? No, nah, but when I was like, uh, when the record came out, I was like, you know, I'd done a ton of press. Yeah. And I was trying to remember one of the particular interviews. I wanted to find it, so I Googled me via the local uh-huh. I- interview and got her. Oh, okay. Talking about her, and I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm not as clever as I thought. I or, mean, or, maybe you're clever because now you can get your wife a ton of uh, free makeup. Great minds, you know. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, though, I'm, 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 I'm. You know, titles are super important to me because I'm a, I'm a control freak, and so yeah. I, I, I always want the title to really reflect what's on the project. I've never right. been, I've never been a person who's been like, oh, 
let's call it God Loves Ugly 2 or something. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Like, I, I've uh, never been a fan of any two or three anything. I, I've I just always, always hated that. I've always, had to have a, I've always had to have a title that really reflects what went into this particular project. It, I mean, it, sometimes it depends because, you know, you guys did do Felt 1, Felt 2, and Felt 3. And yeah, but to me, those weren't. But uh, the, but that that made sense for those because sure. those were like compilational kind of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you make an album for yourself, you make that in your own. Your See, I never even seen those as felt one, two, three. I seen those as, as a tribute to Lisa Bonet, yeah. a tribute to you know Rosie Perez and uh, wh whoever the other one was. I don't remember. Yeah, the, forget the white girl. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday Adams from the Adams family. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Christina right. Ricci. Christina Ricci. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Got a, said, <laughs> got a thing for her still, man. Even chubby version of her because it's like a chubby version of her out there. So, yeah, man. Um, so tonight you guys are playing at Tiger Sequoia, and you guys got Dim Atlas, who I've been feeling. You know, growing up, man, I I got to this point. I don't really listen like I used to. When we first started, me and Merce especially, any new shit that came out, we'd get that shit and we'd listen and we'd analyze the fuck out of your shit and. Figure out if you were a good rapper or not, you know what I mean? And then meet you and tell you what we thought about your shit. You know, I remember when uh, Company Flow first came out, we met LP, and we were just like, you know, this is what we think, you know. And um, <laughs> I stopped being like that, man. I, you know, I remember the first time we went to. Um, Ain't enough time. If, um, you ain't got time to be like that, man. You yeah, got shit yeah, to do. Yeah, man, I, got, I don't even have time to just turn on music, you know what I mean? But um, once I got this spot and, um, you know, I started recording again and, you know, I could turn on music and, um, you know, I'm not dating right now. So I didn't have a girl getting mad at me playing hip hop all the time, you know. So I started playing music and uh, I was playing this uh, lo-fi, uh, you know, playlist on Spotify and Dim Atlas had came on. And it was a song where he was rapping and he was like burping in the in the chorus. He, I'm on my shit. And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? And I fucking fell in love with it immediately because it was so awkward and it reminded me of us in the past, how we didn't care when we were recording. We just made cool shit and his voice and his vocals are very nonchalant. And I have no idea what song you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know about. what song it is. Either. I just know that one chorus line. But I love that. What I've always loved about, um, you know, Atmosphere You and um, everything that goes on with you guys' uh, camp with Rhyme Sayers is that you guys – continually push everybody up with you. You know, new kid comes on the block. Um, you guys take him out like prof and, and all the other people that have been on the label. And I think that's something awesome. Cause we were talking about that earlier that there's a longevity in being the person that you are, you know, the flagship of which you guys have started, but then there's all the young people around it that has, that's built it. And, do you, what do you see the future with Rhyme Sayers and what you're doing with your career? Do you see yourself being a Barry Gordy, being a, you oh, know Quincy God, Jones God. one day? Or man, I hope not. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Like, I, here's the thing, man. Uh, it's a gift and the curse. You uh -huh. know, the gift is I've been put in a position where I can uplift voices of other people. I can I can use some of the resources that I've gained to help some other people get heard, seen. Right. But then the curse is if you know, if that person runs around with me for too long, people start to see them as oh, they're just the opener for atmosphere. Right. So right. I gotta, I gotta watch and be careful of like how you know I gotta just get you there enough to to back off and then let you just do your own thing. You know what I'm saying? And let you build your own empire because I don't want you to just be a part of my empire. Right. I want I, you know that wasn't the point. The point was to to put you to help you find that position so that you could f spread your wings and fly. You know. Uh, and then the other side of it is that is that there's a thin line between being a, um, a flagship artist and being a gatekeeper. Right. And right. I, I don't want to be a gatekeeper. You know, it's not like it's not like I, I'm pointing at you going, well, I'm going to give you a career. I'm going to give you a career. What about the five people that I don't point at? Oh, not giving you one. Not, you know right. What I mean? Right. That's right. Not who I wanted to be either. You know what I mean? And so. So you teaching cats how to how to I, fish. I'm trying to. I'm You're trying not to, out fish. Yeah, man. I'm, I, and, and so. I, I don't want to be that forever. You know right, what I'm right, right. I want I want you to get, be bigger than me. Yeah, yeah. I want of you to blow up. I want you know what yeah. I'm saying. Like like if atmosphere is the biggest thing that we got, then we're not we weren't we weren't doing it right. You know. I feel I, I you on be that. Yes, a, yes. A true leader eventually replaces themselves. Right, right. You 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 teach the next one to come and replace yeah, you. Yeah, when there's when you can't when you you're over rapping when you do your 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 uh, your your swan song you say hey this is the last one. I there's mean, somebody else that comes up at top and then, then that becomes the standard again. I don't know if I'll ever be able to quit. Yeah, yeah. But I do know that I aspire to help develop somebody into the next bigger thing. You know right, what I'm right. Like I love that, man. Cuz cuz otherwise what, what 
Otherwise, this is all just a big game for my ego. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that yeah. does exist, though. You know, you know, especially from a camp that you're from and, you know, a camp we're from, we're very close-knit families, you know. Most of all the people that we work with, especially in our group, we all know each other and we grew up around each other. Um, it's a trip to think about some people that were shotgun marriages or just went straight into a label solo and then got in a group with people that were solo and then the label said, oh, this would be fucking amazing if you all – made this thing that doesn't really exist and pretend that you guys are friends. And then, i.e. NWA, which wasn't always originally like that, but the way that happens with money and certain parts of that uh, that dynamic. And it's a trip because then there's always one person that goes, oh, I'm the motherfucker. And, sure, sure. and I'm, you know what, this started because of me and my ideas should be what should be pushed. And it's like, fuck that, because I've always been that person in life. You know, no matter who I ran with, even when I was doing hood shit, you know, once I had my own idea about something, I was like, oh, say la vie. You know, because I have to move. You have to move in your own shadow. You know, what I mean, you don't want to just always be in the shadow of somebody else. And I think that's brilliant and and very humble of you to say something like that. Because a lot of the artists that you guys have brought up are some top, you know, players. Like they're actually really good artists. I've never really thought of anybody on you guys' label or anybody that you fuck with. I was like, oh, that's garbage. Why would they put that out? You know what I mean? You know, because that's the thing too, man. I think that's kind of ugh. You know. I mean, you know, not to sound like a bumper sticker, but it's all subjective. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's artists that. I like more than other artists, but to me, it's never been about which which rapper was better than which rapper or which artist was making fresh shit versus trash. It's all about the human. And so with me, I'm proud to say I don't think I've ever worked with any garbage humans. Right. You word, 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 word. It's like, it's, like, it's like you might have different opinions about this artist or that artist or, or if this one's any good or if this one's any good. And that's good. I mean, everybody should have opinions and you shouldn't necessarily – I don't – I'm not trying to make you like everything I like. Right, right. But, but just know that if I... It, 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 Quality. If I back this person's project, it's because I believe in this human. Right, right, right. You know right, what I'm right. saying? Like, way more than I give a fuck about their rap abilities. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? It's right. like, to me, it's like, oh... Prof is a good human. Yeah. Dem Atlas is a good human. Ali is an amazing human. Yeah, I love you know Ali. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, to me, that is, that, that's, that's my hook. That's, yeah. that's my hook. And, you know, saying that, you got good people, man. There was a time, a story, short story, but we were all on uh, Rage Against Machine, uh, a Rock the Bells tour, and I think we were in New York, and uh, two buses had broke down, and we all had to, like, cram into the Legends bus, right? And, um, of course, you know, we're all good homies. We're like, yeah, fuck it, take our bus. We, I think we gave, like, roadies the beds and shit, and everybody else stayed up drinking or doing whatever the fuck they could. And we all wound up crammed in the back, you know, the little back cubby area of the, the tour bus, and it was me, uh, Ali, uh, maybe Sage Francis, somebody else. Ant was with you. Yeah. Sage came with me. I was on the Def <laughs> Jux bus. <laughs> me and Sage, and I'm trying to think of who else ended up on the Def Jux bus. But, yeah, I remember this. Dude, I remember waking up, like, in the morning. I'm like, you know, my head's on, on Ali's head, like Uncle Ali and shit. And he was like, oh, oh shit. Oh, hey, how you doing? You know, like, we had, we had just met. You know, I mean, we didn't know each other well yet. But it was like that family camaraderie. That was one of those tours that actually was one of the best – that we had did in a while, man, because uh, that was the, I think that was the last time uh, that Def Jux was still actual. And um, all the artists at that time were all together. You know, everybody was there. And that was a fun ass fucking trip. It was a good tour. Yeah. This was a trippy thing. And I love to say this on this one because I get away of saying it. And, and if Sage Francis knows about this, uh, we found a microphone that was not, I ain't gonna tell that, I ain't gonna tell that story this time. We're gonna tell a story, story about the bladeless microphone another time. All right. Yeah, because I actually, I'm looking at the time. So, anyways, thank you, Slug, for coming on my show, hey, man. man. Thanks for having me. Um, it's always an honor to sit down and talk with you, man, and hopefully this won't be the last time tonight we'll see you at the show, and that is tonight at Tiger's Koya, and it's going to be with Dim Atlas, The Lioness, and, of course, who was the other one? DJ Keezy. DJ Keezy. Right here, look at this. DJ Keezy. There you go. It's represent. Oh, that like easy. Uh, DJ Keezy. Easy does it. Keezy does it. Keezy does it. Yeah. That's kind of lit. I might need one of those tonight, man. <laughs> I'm going to need one of those. Once again, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, bro. Hey, thank you. ASAP. Yes, sure. We're moving at the speed of light. Illuminate the path that we're moving on. Jubilate. Now let's have a mouth for the make the people bounce for the music is the route. Yes, sure. We're moving at the speed of light. Illuminate the path that we're moving on. Jubilate. Now let's have a mouth for the make the people bounce. That's me. Riding in the back of a taxi. Gotta go home where I can't sleep. Till the telephone be alone at the home cause it have to be hey. Psychos, not in a mirror of a typo Act like you didn't know life goes The world fair ain't no fair When you're working at the side show Well, time's a little piece of